Welcome to Barley and Hops. My name is George, and today we're going to talk about barrels and their use. Uh, we use barrels uh, for wines or for spirits, primarily for spirits, um, and that's what we get the most interest in uh, because it does such a wonderful job of maturing and flavoring a neutral spirit that you place in, in um, your uh, barrels. So today we've got a couple of different examples. I've got a two liter barrel, a three liter barrel, the five liter barrel, and a 10 liter barrel. And I'm gonna to explain to you a little bit about these and also the differences, and then we're gonna get into some other aspects about using barrels for maturing spirits. There are some options. Um, as opposed to using the barrels, you can use the wood chips. I have dark oak chips, uh, medium toasted oak chips, and light toasted oak chips. And the differences between these three are as far and wide as you can range. Uh, a lot of it has to do with personality, flavor profiles you're looking for, uh, the, the hues, the development of the darkness, uh, how dark you're looking to get your, your spirits, and of course, time. Um, the, of course, the darker oak chips will turn your spirits a little darker with a little bit more oak chips in a shorter period of time but you're not gonna gather as much of the flavors and pull the tannin and the vanillin out of the, uh, out of the wood as, as, uh, as easily. Uh, medium puts you in about the medium range, and of course, with the lighter oak chips, uh, you get a little bit more of those tannins, a little bit more of those vanillins, and also, it takes just a little bit longer to color, but it'll be a lighter hue. So, I offer that to you just as an option. Uh, but if you wanna go that option, and you wanna have the, the rustic barrel, that's the conversation piece that sits on the mantle. These are things that are excellent, and you can reuse them over and over again, and we'll get to that. But I wanna caution you about the two liter barrel does not hold two liters. Um, there's a lot of discussion about why it doesn't hold two liters. It's about 1.8 liters uh, or a little bit less. Uh, and the same thing with the three, the five, and the 10. Um, some discussion is, and the best one that I can offer you is, uh, someone told me this, and I've done a lot of research. Someone told me that they said, well, these barrels are measured in how much they displace. So this would displace two liters, but it doesn't necessarily hold two liters. Uh, I'm like, okay, but we give it the name as a two liter barrel. Of course, I can't verify that, uh, but it sounds almost plausible. It sounds like the best excuse I can come up with. Uh, all the research that I've done is that there are so many different measurement units, uh, and you, you could use, if it's a barrel for wine, it's one thing. If it's a barrel for sherry, it's something else. If it's a barrel for wine, it's measured in another. If it's a barrel that's measured in Canada, it's measured in one way. If it's in the UK or if it's in... So there are so many different measurements. Just suffice it to say that if you ask for a two liter barrel, you're gonna get one that looks like this. These things are, these things are amazing uh, because you can place your spirits in here once, when they come to you, they, they, these things will leak because there's no glue. So you'll place them in a bucket or place them on their stand, fill them with hot water, let them set overnight, and they'll swell, and that'll seal the barrel itself. And then once you seal the barrel, you just open the top, you dump out all the water, and then you add your spirits to it. Uh, you let this set. Now, here's the maturation time. We do know that the smaller the barrel, the shorter the maturation time. And then when you get to a larger barrel, it's a little bit longer, the larger, longer, and the larger, of course, a lot longer and the average is about two to three weeks in the two liter uh, maybe four to five weeks in the three liter you're getting about six or seven weeks out of the five liter and a good, good three months or more out of the uh, out of the ten liter um, another good gauge is the maturation time in this barrel and this barrel are about equal but it's all based on how much surface area of your spirit is in contact with inside the, these barrels that are already pre-charred to medium toast. So the maturation time here is equal to about five to six years in a large barrel. So what we're doing is we're just shortening the range of time it takes to mature the spirit, but we're doing it in a smaller barrel. So the time uh, shortens drastically as opposed to a larger barrel, where if you've got 100 liters or more, it takes years in order to do that because more of the product is in contact with the surface area inside the, the barrel. Now these things are, like I said, amazing. If you order one of these, and there's several several websites out there, I'd say shop around and, and find one that, you, that really turns you on, uh, and they'll range in price from what I've stated here, starting with about 30 bucks. Uh, this one can range as high as 115, depend, if you want to spend that, spend it. But uh, there are some unscrupulous uh, dealers out there that'll sell these to you for that price if you'll pay it. But I'll tell you, they're, they're not worth that much. 
Uh, they're really a great centerpiece. They really do a great job of maturing spirits. Uh, they, they cause a lot of questions in the house and they're really neat to have, but they're really not worth $115. Uh, I would offer to you that if you order one, always order one that you have the option to have varnished. These are the examples, and I'm not sure if you can tell the difference here, but this one is not varnished. Uh, this is just a straight keg barrel, uh, and this one has a slight sheen to it. And if you get one like this, I always, and it usually doesn't cost anything extra, just tell them, yeah, I want it varnished. If it give you the option, yeah, varnish that thing uh, because they'll last a lot longer that way and they won't look like this one, which has been used. And you'll see that it's starting to bleach and leach all over the place. You'll see that blackness. Uh, it really does give it a good antique look. But if you're not looking for that antique look, make sure you get one that's varnished. Now, I'm gonna set these aside. Uh, real quick here because I'm going to show you I have one here that we keep in the store and I've got my spirits in here uh, and I use just a regular sugar wash uh, I had it I even had it laser etched that was pretty neat cost me about 30 bucks um, but I've got one here that I've got some spirits in and I've had it in here now for oh probably about six weeks so it's well within it it, it is it's matured and, and it's ready for uh, for consumption uh, it was probably ready for consumption at the very beginning, but uh, we leave it set in here. And I leave this sitting on the counter behind the store, so if somebody wants to take a, uh, a sample, they're more than welcome to. But I want to show you what it produces. Um, this went in here, and it was absolutely crystal clear like anything that would come out of your still. And that's the finished product. And I achieved that in probably about the first three and a half, four weeks, but I've allowed it to sit in the barrel and it just stays there. So now I've got to, now I've got to figure out what to do with this. Well, we'll leave that for another time. But I just wanted to give you an idea, and this is the one, I've got this one, this, is, uh, this has been varnished, and I've used this several times. Uh, once you use it, my average has been about six fills before the barrel neutralizes. So let's talk about neutralization of the barrel. Once everything is extracted or leached out of the wood, and primarily you use white oak, uh, American white oak versus French white oak, and French white oak is just as good, it's just a little bit more subtle than the American white oak. Uh, but once you've leached everything out of the barrel, uh, the barrel becomes almost useless, but it's a great storage container. Uh, now some people will ascribe to uh, rechar in the barrel, and we'll show you how to do that in a moment. But uh, you're not wasting your time by recharring the barrel, but what you'll never have is you'll never get the tannin and the vanillins that are in the wood naturally that you leach out. Once they're gone, they're gone. Uh, but there are things that you can do. Now we'll set this aside, uh, and you'll notice that this is one of the barrels, and I told you that we've used this several times, and what we're going to do is I'm going to show you real quickly how you can uh, rechar the barrel if you like to. Now recharring the barrel does have a benefit. Um, of course, it has a benefit for clarifying and filtering. Uh, I'd always uh, recommend that you filter your spirit before you put it in the barrel. This will also make the barrel last a lot longer. So without further ado, let's do this. Let's take this apart. It's just more than just a, a bung in the top. And you twist, the, this comes out. This is the spout that was on the front. And that leaves you with the barrel with all the rings. Now, th when you're using a larger barrel, uh, it's really a two-man job uh, it, because it's a whole lot easier to get four hands to hold these staves together. Remember, these are not glued, so they're all stuck together, and then these bands hold everything in place, and then when you put the hot water in here and allow it to set overnight, it swells, and it'll tighten up with these bands, and that's what causes it to seal so there are no glues. So just remember, when you start to take this apart, it's gonna wanna fall apart on you. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, the items you're gonna need are a little hammer, a screwdriver, a roll of tape, and of course, you're gonna need something to burn with. What I'm gonna, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a piece of, of this uh, black, I'm just using black electrical tape because it's just so useful and so easy to use. We're gonna pull off that bottom stave, and this one's off the bottom because the spout is on this end, so we're going to get this one off. And these, after the barrel, there it goes, after your barrel dries, it'll start to constrict. So these rings will become fairly loose. Uh, they may even fall off on their own. Just be careful. So we're going to run a piece of tape. We're going to run it this way. 
we're going to run a piece of tape around here. And the only thing that this is going to do is ensure that the bottom of this barrel doesn't pop apart. Because once it pops apart, you're going to have a challenge getting it back together, uh, even with four hands. Okay, there we go. Then you want to try to pop off these other rings. There we go. <laughs> Excuse me. That's the second ring. And then we're going to pop off this ring. And the reason we want to pop this ring off is because we want to be able to, there it is, we want to be able to separate those staves. Now, once I've taken off that larger ring from the bottom, I'm going to put that middle ring back on. And the reason I'm going to put that middle ring back on is because I don't want those staves to go anywhere. So that makes it easy now. That leaves me with the top ring on the front, the center ring on the front, and the larger ring. Here we go. Let's get this thing popped off. Some of these will pop off real easy. Some of them will be challenging. You may have to use a hammer to beat it off, but usually they'll just pop right off. Now, once you get it to this point, understand this barrel is very, very delicate now. And you see, you'll start to pull these staves away. Put your finger in the hole because it's getting ready to fall out. And the end of this barrel is going to come out. See, this is why it takes, it usually takes four hands. I've done this a couple times and I'm trying to be careful so I don't lose anything. Uh, I kind of know what to expect. <laughs> And in a moment here, as long as I don't tear this up completely, we're going to have the end of this barrel out. There we go. And there it comes. Come out of there. So there she is. So we got the end of the barrel out. I'll set that aside. And if I can give you a kind of a look on what it looks like on the inside, you'll see that uh, it's really, really delicate. And you can see it's, it's, it has been charred. Uh, what we're gonna do now, we got it apart. This is really easy. Now, now we get some heat. Now remember, if you've had uh, your moonshine in here, that wood has already collected all that moonshine. So be careful staying back, because when you hit that, when you put the flame in, the residual alcohol that's in there that is very flammable will probably flame up on you. But this one I know is not like that because I've done it before. This is the second time that I'm going to rechar this. And you just go in and just start to rechar and get it as dark as you're looking for. I wouldn't go too dark and I wouldn't light it on fire, uh, but I'd get it as dark as you want to get it because what you're just trying to do is you're trying to get a char on the inside of the barrel. Uh, remember, we're, we're not going to re be able to replace any of those essentials that are inside the wood that you've already leached out. But what you are going to do is you are going to have a newly charred barrel that's going to be a better filter mechanism for you and a clarifier for, uh, for your spirits. So, and don't forget, don't forget to char the bottom and don't forget, don't forget to hold up your, your top and give it a char. So, and it depends on how long you do this, on how charred it becomes, because, you know, your, your spirits are going to be in contact with this as well. <coughs> so, so if I, that's enough, I guess. Now, now it takes, believe it or not, it will take four hands for me to put this back together. And that's not a hard process. It's just as easy as being able to hold the, uh, the top in place. And there's a small ridge in here. I didn't get a couple of hands and a couple of fingers to get this just in the right way and then re replace your rings. And I'd replace, of course, your first large ring, your second ring. And once you get that on, you can actually flip it over and replace the bottom rings, the large, the middle, and the small ring, and flip it back over and place your smaller ring on top. Uh, once you get that done, reseal your barrel like you normally would. Uh, fill it with warm water and let it sit overnight. Uh, some will seal within an hour or two. Some take all night to seal because that wood has to soak up all of that water and expand. But once that's done, you've got another charred barrel ready to, for use again. 
So that's all we have for today. Hey, thanks for joining us. Like us on Facebook if you get an opportunity. Visit our website. Uh, leave us some, a message. Give us some feedback. Uh, we're doing the best we possibly can to ensure that your distilling is a pleasurable distilling experience. Thank you.